Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to the Flexible Systems for Moms podcast. My name is Lede, and I will be your host today. Today, I wanted to spend some time talking about decluttering and really just having a conversation, a discussion, if you will, um, about do you really know what it means to declutter? Now, this episode is not going to be for the masses um, because I understand very well that there are some people who know exactly what it means to declutter, but I do know that there is a population of people who don't um, because I was in that population at one point. There are some people who kind of hype up what it means to declutter in their head, which means that they are struggling to make time for it and to knock it out consistently, which means that the housework probably feels a little abnormally heavy to them because they're not making the time, nor do they have a realistic strategy to release some of the inventory that they have in their home. I know for me, a big obstacle was the fact that I did not know what decluttering meant on its own. I used to think that decluttering, organizing, and deep cleaning were the same task. And so as I mentioned, whenever I felt um, like I needed to declutter or an area needed to be handled, I was not able to separate those tasks out in my mind because I didn't know that you were supposed to. I thought it was one big package deal. And what would happen is if I see something that needed to be corrected, I would lump all of these assumptions into that project and my mind would interpret it as, oh, you don't have time to do this. So I would just sit there looking crazy and I wouldn't address it because I blew it up in my mind. I made it too big. So in today's episode, I really want to talk to people who are looking at their decluttering projects like that and are having a difficult time squeezing it into their lives. And I really want to talk about what decluttering is separate from all those other tasks. And I want to talk about why I recommend that you get into the mindset of looking at it as its own separate entity, its own separate beast, and separating it from the other tasks that people sometimes kind of lump together when we're talking about decluttering and how that's gonna help you out. So in my mind, decluttering is really simple. Um, Decluttering is simply the act of purging things out of your home that do not belong in your home anymore. That's not a Webster dictionary definition. I'm sure if you go online, you'll find a different definition, but for my purposes, that's what it means. Um, And there's a whole lot of, this is, this task alone is easy to do. It means picking up a product, deciding, does it stay or does it go? And if it goes, getting it out of your home. And, It's a simple task to do, but at the same time, it's not so simple because sometimes there's a lot of emotional baggage that goes along with our clutter, which is a topic for a whole nother day. I think I kind of addressed it in a video previously about like things you learn in childhood that makes it hard for you to declutter, something like that. But the task by itself does not have to be difficult, but typically there's a lot of emotions that decluttering challenges us to go through that um, can make it hard from that perspective. But for today's topic, I really wanted to talk about the benefits of approaching decluttering as its own task and then following up with the organizing and the deep cleaning and things of that nature. Okay, so let's get started. The first reason that I recommend that you start looking at decluttering as its own separate beast is because it's really hard to move into step two, which is organizing when you have clutter in the way. 
one thing that I used to do and that I still see people doing is trying to do both of these tasks at the same time. Trying to organize and declutter at the same time. And for me, I feel like it makes it very difficult to create the vision of like what this space should look like when I have too much clutter in the way. Um, the metaphor that I thought would be really helpful to kind of paint this picture is something that I heard from a business coach that I love to listen to. He was talking about like how, you know, we can have these visions of like the way things ought to be, the way we want our businesses to run. And so the vision is there. It's always been there. But sometimes there are like so many things in the way that makes it hard to see the vision and our job is to remove the things that you know are in the way that shouldn't be there and the metaphor that he used was just imagine that it's a cloudy day like you go outside it's foggy it's cloudy it's dark it's glum and some for some people you know they'll assume that because i can't see the sun i don't think anybody thinks like this but let's imagine that they did I can't see the sun, which means that there's no sun there. There's no vision there. There's no, like, I don't have any ideas or visions about what, you know, this situation ought to look like when I'm done with it. And, you know, if you're wise, you know that the sun never disappeared. The sun has always been there, but it's kind of blocked. There's all this stuff in the way. There's all these clouds in the way. And if you can simply get the clouds out of the way, then you can begin to see the vision. You can begin to see where we're going and kind of like the ideas will start to flow in and you'll be able to know like this is what it is that I want to create. And I feel like this kind of applies to clutter. You know, if you walk into your pantry and it's filled with the things that you want to keep and also a ton of stuff that you don't need, you don't want, you don't plan to use. It's really hard to open that pantry and to be inspired and to think like, this is where I wanna take this pantry. This is where I wanna put these items. This is how I wanna organize this. It's really difficult. I don't wanna say impossible, cause it is, you know, you can always get inspiration or whatever on Pinterest, but I feel like it becomes a lot easier to create the vision of where you want to go when you take out all the excessive stuff that doesn't belong there. When you remove the clutter, you get honest about what shouldn't be there, it becomes a lot easier for you to see like, okay, this is where I wanna go. This is how I can organize this in a way that makes more sense to me. And it just makes the organizing part of your plan feel much easier much lighter and more doable at least that's been my experience i've tried to do both i've tried to organize with the clutter there making decluttering decisions at the same time that i'm organizing and i've also applied this principle of spending a day just pulling out things that don't belong and then the next day coming back and being like okay what do i want to do with this place and i felt like for me it was much easier and I felt like more excited about my ideas when I made those decisions and I didn't have clutter being a part of the process. All right, let's move into the second reason that I advocate for separating your decluttering and your organizing into two distinct and separate processes. Um, the next number two is storage you know if you're wanting to organize something um at some point you're going to probably be thinking about like storage containers what do i want to put this stuff in or how do i want to arrange this and i don't know about y'all but like i guess you can shop at the dollar tree but even then i feel like storage it adds up in terms of pricing and also the time commitment to go to the store to pick out the proper sizes of what you need um even ordering stuff and waiting like it the process i feel like and also the money i feel like it's a consuming thing 
And I feel like if you kind of go with the principle we talked about in step one, you have a clear vision of what you need. You have accurate quantities of things that you want to store. You can accurately see like how big things are and what you need. I feel like it will make the whole storage consumption process much easier. You're going to save money because you're not going to be buying extra storage that you actually don't need. And then only, you know, after you finish your project, you realize you have all this excessive storage that you can either return, which takes time, or that you don't need and you're going to save for later, which creates more clutter and wasted money, in my opinion. So I just feel like if you were to declutter, release what you don't need and get that stuff out of the home first, you'll make better decisions when it comes to purchasing the storage solutions that you need. Once again, the reason I share this is because this is something that I've experienced before. I remember when I just had my two boys and I was organizing their toys. And I remember at the time we had a Dollar General really close to our house. And like, I would just go and buy like all these bins that I thought I needed because I was looking at the whole situation. And then I organized everything. I put everything where I wanted it to go. And then I was left over with a lot of bins that I didn't need anymore or that weren't even applicable to the situation anymore. And I think, you know, what's proven to be better for me is to get rid of the clutter, put things into the groups or the categories that I think makes the most sense. Then I take photographs of those categories and then I go to the store and I'm like, okay, I know I need a bin for, I don't know, Power Rangers. And I'm like, I think this bin would be the perfect bin for this category. And then I purchase it. I know I need a bin for tools and this is how many tools I want to put together. So I think this type of storage container makes the most sense. So I was just able to make better, more accurate decisions and, um, less guessing when it came to making those purchases for the storage that I would need for the items that I wanted to organize. And so for me, decluttering played a huge role in helping me improve my decision. The last reason that I recommend having your decluttering and your organizing being two distinct processes is because I feel like Decluttering is or can be an emotional task for people. Like there's a lot of emotional attachment that can go along with items that probably are not a good fit for a household anymore. And when you're trying to group a lot of tasks together, like decluttering, organizing, and deep cleaning, and you feel like it's one task, I feel like it makes it easy to maneuver and get away from difficult decisions that you need to make. It's like if you set your timer for 15 minutes and you're like, my only job here is to find things to declutter. I need to find, if you're doing Fly Lady, 27 Fling Boogie, I'm, I need to find 27 things to get rid of. It kind of puts you in a position where you can't wiggle out of those uncomfortable decisions anymore because this could be its own separate topic but your brain for a lot of us who struggle with releasing clutter is going to come up with all kind of justifications for why you need to hold on to stuff and when you can be easily distracted or pulled in another direction you know it's like you kind of believe those thoughts and you don't challenge them but when you set a task to declutter that's all you have to do it kind of forces you to acknowledge your choices you know and I can hear it now you know like you bought something I don't know you bought that exercise equipment and if you decide to let it go even though y'all aren't using it it's taken up space that could better be used for something else if you let it go it's like you let go of the vision of who it is that you want to be. You want to be this person who exercises, you know, seven days a week. You want to be this person who juices. I bought a juicer, y'all, and I, it was really hard for me to let that one go because it was expensive. But 
it's like you want you have these visions of this healthy person that you're supposed to be and then it's like by letting go of that clutter it's kind of like acknowledging that like that's not who I am I thought I was gonna use it I didn't and that's painful I know you know also decluttering makes you confront the fact that maybe you didn't spend your money so wisely I don't know I feel like I don't know as a society it's almost like we feel like well if we bought something we feel like we may wasted money on it it's almost like we feel like holding on to it is like redemption <laughs> even though you're not using it it's taking up space that you could be using for something else we feel like we didn't waste the money now because we're holding on to it even though we don't want it sorry i'm trying not to laugh because this is some stuff i used to do and talking about it now just i don't know it's interesting but that doesn't take away from the fact that you wasted that money it's okay we all make purchasing we all make poor purchasing decisions at one point or another at the time we were sold on this dream or this idea that we would use it in a particular way and it didn't happen and it's okay to acknowledge that you made a mistake but sometimes i feel like you know decluttering forces us to confront the fact that at that time we didn't spend our money wisely and i think that we feel like holding on to stuff like i mentioned it's almost like we feel less wasteful now because we're holding on to it i mean i make it make sense to me y'all but i don't see it that way anymore i don't feel like holding on to clutter and not even being able to put stuff in your cabinets because full of stuff that you haven't touched in years i don't feel like that's saving money in my opinion um you know and that's just my perspective also holding on to clutter or actually releasing clutter can make you confront things that you know maybe you were told in childhood people made you feel guilty about being wasteful i don't know and then here you are holding on to stuff that you don't use anymore and it's kind of hard to do things that contradict the way that you were taught but in my opinion what's even more difficult is clinging on to rules that are not a great fit for your life you know like things are so different now than maybe the way things were when your grandma was a kid things are so different now than maybe how things were when your parents were kids and so you it's difficult to take this advice that wasn't meant for your life and cling on to it very dearly even though it causes you pain and I feel like decluttering makes you confront that about yourself. Is that what you're doing? Are you making choices that don't make sense for you because you want to make other people happy and other people pleased with yourself? And so I feel like whenever you're trying to combine decluttering with all this other stuff and you get to these objects that you know ain't got no business being in your house, you get to these objects you don't love, you don't use nobody else uses it it's just taking up space now you got everything on your counters because you don't have space in your cabinets because you're trying to hide all your clutter it makes you confront why is this here <laughs> why am i doing this to myself like what is it what am i holding on to this for like what is it that i think that i'm doing I haven't used this stuff and it makes you really confront like why it is that you do what you do which I think is really invaluable and an opportunity to learn about yourself and an opportunity to ask like now that I know this about myself is this how I want to live is this what I want to model for my children is this what I want my children to be struggling with and now you put yourself in a position to not skirt around it but to ask yourself those questions about what do you want to pass on? What do you want to model for your family? And as I mentioned, when you try to lump too many tasks together, it's easy to feel productive, yet be avoiding some of the more difficult questions that you need to answer for yourself. And so 
anyway, I know this is like a tough love lesson today. And I don't create podcasts, any podcasts that I feel like would not have been helpful for me before I had some of these re- re- uh, revelations. And I know my podcast is not for everyone, but I do know who it is for and I know who I'm speaking to. And these are things that I absolutely needed to hear. So I figured I would have some real talk with you guys today and share it. We can have a whole different episode on how do you know when something is clutter. I think I've talked about it before, but maybe in a future podcast we can talk about it a little more deeply. I kind of hinted on some of it today, but we can definitely have a more direct conversation about this at some point. But um, yeah, these are some thoughts and reflections about decluttering. I highly recommend that you make time to get it done. When you separate decluttering out from, you know, the other tasks, then you'll find that it's really easy to squeeze into your daily life. Even if all you can do is be like, what's the item of the day, girl? Every morning I'm finding one thing in this house that doesn't belong here. If you are a family that has seasons, you know, and by that I mean different stages of your life, there's probably things from the last chapter of your life that does not belong in this chapter. So I feel like as people who change and evolve and grow over time, you, there's something in your house you can be releasing and sending to another family that can use it. So that's how you can start addressing your decluttering if you separate it out. Have a box somewhere in the entryway and just be like, I'm gonna find an item of the day. And if you do that for a year, like it should be so much easier to take care of your decluttering or your organizing projects when you start to remove the clutter and remove the things that make it difficult for you to see the vision that you want for your house. So when you separate it out, we are just simplifying it and making it easier for you to do. Another way is you can go ahead and pull that 27 fling boogie from Fly Lady. I'm gonna set my timer once a week for 15 minutes and I'm gonna go through every drawer, every cabinet, and I'm gonna find 20, excuse me. I'm gonna find 27 things that we don't need in this house. We don't need all of this. That's why we feel cramped. You know, that's why we don't feel comfortable in our own home anymore. We have over consumed. We have too much stuff and we're not like too much stuff coming in and not enough stuff going out. There has to be balance there. And when you don't have that balance, you will start to feel it. So do it the fly lady way. Is 15 minutes too long for you? Okay, five minutes, five minutes, a couple times a week. So if you want to declutter, we can definitely simplify it. And one way to do that is to separate it out from everything else. And as I've hinted at the beginning of this episode, decluttering is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. There's simply no question about it in my opinion. The less stuff that you have in your inventory, the easier it is to take care of your home. The less stuff that you have to worry about, the easier that it is to do what you need to do. So those are my thoughts today on decluttering. If you guys enjoy these podcasts, please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing if you are new. We will continue to have these tough love conversations, especially as we are moving into the new year. And I hope that you will stick around and um, be a part of it so i want to know you guys' thoughts down below um how are you guys going to be approaching your decluttering over the next several months as we're starting off a fresh year and we're trying to pull our homes back together let me know in the comments see you guys later